morning. Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad you come into this holy space as we prepare to worship God and to have fellowship with each other. But before we begin our service, there are a few announcements. As always, I encourage you to pick up a bulletin because we have information in the back of the bulletin. If you don't pick up a bulletin, we also have the information scrolling uh, through our PowerPoint. So um, hopefully you can see what are the, some, some of the activities that we have coming up. First of all, our Social Concerns Committee has once more turned to uh, Jefferson Elementary and we're helping them. Uh, we have our blue bins ready for your donations. And of course, those are backpacks, shoes, socks, things that kids need for school, healthy snacks, juice boxes, nothing that needs to be refrigerated. Uh, and all those donations are welcome to, uh, for you to bring to the office and to put them in the blue bins. If for some reason the, uh, you want to drop them off during the week and the uh, narthex of course is locked, let us know and you can bring it to the office and we'll happily receive them there. Other announcements are in the bulletin. We do lift up uh, the family of Mel Adams. Ani is here today, and we have um, a date for Mel's service. It's August 24th. It's a Saturday at 11 a.m. So make note of that. We will, of course, put that in the calendar and put that in our bulletin. But as of the print, when we printed these on Friday, we did not have the time. Uh, but now we know it's 11 o'clock, August 24th. I know that there are other joys and concerns in the community. We uh, welcome those at this moment. But first, I want to welcome back, no strangers to this congregation, Dan and Misty. Hello. And Zach and Karina, we're so glad you're here, visiting from Austria. So, hello and welcome. And I know you're here to support Sue and her upcoming special events. <laughs> and all that goes in preparation of that. So, we're glad you're here. Welcome. Are there other announcements, uh, joys, and concerns? Anything that we would like to lift up at this time? I just wanted to thank you for all your, your love. Is the, is the little uh, switch on it on? Not on that, that works. Oh, wow. That's a big voice. <laughs> I just want to thank you for all your love and your candles and your thoughts that have come our way that have really sustained us through all of this passing with Mel. And um, I want you to call your attention to the beautiful flowers that are up on the, in, in uh, front of the podium. Um, those were sent by a piano student uh, of mine, and it was so beautiful, I thought, I have to share that with you today. So um, we look forward to the celebration of Mel's life on Saturday the 24th. I'll have a sister who will be from Pennsylvania that will be here, and um, we'll have a wonderful remembrance of, of Mel's life, which we will. Thank you. Are there other announcements? Joys, concerns. Uh, today's National Ice Cream Day. <laughs> <laughs> today's National Ice Cream Day. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a joy, yeah. or is it a concern? <laughs> it could be both a joy and a concern. <laughs> yes, thank you. Any other, or anything else for the good of the order here? Well, let's take a moment and reach out to your neighbors, say, we're glad you're here, and then remain standing as we open with our opening song. <laughs> Yeah, 
Let us now quiet our hearts and minds as we turn to God in prayer. Creator God, we gather together to worship you, to give you thanks, to proclaim your greatness, to sing your praise, and to celebrate your, your faithful presence with us. O oh God, you are giving and forgiving. You are the wellspring of the joy of living, and our hearts overflow with the many blessings we receive daily. In this moment, we humbly come before you, bringing our prayers of joys, our concerns, our petitions for ourselves, for our family, for our communities, for our world. Gracious God, we pray for healing. We pray for all who are in need of your tender touch. We pray for the caregivers who watch over the sick. Grant them strength and patience. We pray for the grieving. We ask that you grant them your comforting presence in their moment of need. Oh God, we pray for the hungry. May we bring the sustenance that they need through our offerings and our gifts and our presence. We pray for our nation at this moment where it is so divided. We pray for our world. We pray for places where wars never cease, where violence is the norm. Help us as followers of Jesus to bring peace to the places we live that we may begin the healing process that this world needs. Help us to see the need in others, that we may be your hands and feet in the world, O oh God. And in this moment, in this holy space, we bring the needs that we carry on our hearts. And these are silent prayers. Gracious God, we pray that your spirit would guide and inspire our worship today. Open our mouths to sing and to speak your praise. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see you at work among us and open our hearts to receive your love. We offer your, ourselves to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for Today's scripture reading is from Mark 6, verses 30 to 34, and verses 53 to 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land in Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, 
they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. When I prepare my sermons, my messages, each week, I have a method. I start with a scripture. I always start there. I read it several times, always with a pencil in hand. The first time I read it through without making any marks, without circling or underlining anything, and then I read it again. And this time with my pencil ready circling or underlying words or phrases that jump out at me. And then I read it again, noting where I have made the marks and reading those with emphasis. Now usually this process brings me some clarity about what I can bring to you on Sunday morning during the sermon time. And this week's message is no exception. I read, I circled, I underlined, I prayed, I pondered. And the words that drew me in were found in the first two verses of today's text. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he, Jesus, said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. That's Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. Now, if you're wondering which of those words I just read, which ones did I underline or circle, well, here they are. Gathered. The apostles gathered around Jesus. So I circled gathered. And then I circled the word told. The disciples told Jesus all that they had done. And then I also circled they. I then circled and underlined the phrase, come away, and the word rest. Gathered, told, they. Come away and rest. Those are the words that I circled and underlined and found jumping out at me. So what message do these words have for us this morning? Well, first of all, some context, some background to understand our scripture. The entire scene from this text in Mark is about ministry. It's about Jesus and the disciples and the people that they encounter. Now today's gospel reading is part of a larger section, a group of stories that include, among many, Jesus feeding the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water. So this story kind of is interposed in between these other events. This section of the gospel includes a lot of movement. A lot of moving from one place to another. And it includes a lot of the crowds that follow Jesus. So it's about ministry happening with each encounter. Now looking once more at the words that I highlighted. As I studied this text, as, as I circled and looked at the words, keeping in mind that this context, the text, is about ministry. Here are some thoughts that came to me that I would like to share with you this morning. First of all, ministry is collaborative. It happens with others. This is made clear to me by the word gathered. The disciples gathered. You see, they had been out doing all that Jesus taught them to do. They were preaching, teaching, healing. Jesus had given them 
them the authority to go out to do all this. And they did it all together. Two by two, they would go out. So ministry is collaborative. They didn't go out alone. Jesus didn't do ministry by himself. He had his disciples. So ministry is not a solo endeavor. It's collaborative. No one person does this alone. Ministry takes place in a community of faith for a community. So it's collaborative. That's the first lesson. Now the next observation that came to me is this. Communication is important. Now how did I come to that? Well, the next word I circled was told. The disciples told Jesus all that they had done. There was communication, there was conversation, they shared their stories, they shared their experiences, they talked with Jesus and each other. So communication is important. When we communicate, we share our experiences. We learn from each other, we encourage others that way to engage in ministry as well. And when we share, we uplift each other. We learn what others are doing and we say, hey, great job. I'd like to be part of that. So we uplift each other. And then when we communicate and we share, we find strength to continue. Or when we are overwhelmed or in need of a break, as we share with others, we may find that rest, that renewal to continue. And this leads me to the next thought on ministry. I had underlined the phrase and the word come away and rest. And the scripture tells us that Jesus noticed that the disciples were tired. He saw that. He recognized that in them probably because he had felt it himself. And he had compassion, not just for the crowds, but also for those that followed him, his disciples. So he tells them to rest. He tells them to come away from the crowds and, and have something to eat. Now, one of the important themes in Scripture is the need for rest and renewal. It happens throughout the Gospels. Jesus knew it was important to rest, to get away from time to time between the teachings and the healings, between the miracles, the crowds. And many, many times Jesus sought this moment of rest, this moment where he could just be by himself away. And we read about this in all four Gospels. For example, in Matthew 14, Jesus withdraws in a boat to be alone. And later in Matthew 17, Jesus and the disciples go up to a high mountain to be apart. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus withdraws to the wilderness to pray. And in John chapter 6, Jesus withdraws to the mountain alone. So this theme of getting away for renewal, for, for rest, is present throughout our scriptures. And in this morning's scripture, Jesus suggests that the disciples, all of them, need time to get away, to get away from the crowds, to get away to rest and reflect. And he tells the disciples, come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest for a while. To a lonely place. That's an odd choice of words. But if you've ever read the King James Version of this text, you may have noticed something different. Instead of come away, the King James Version reads, come ye apart. Come ye apart into a desert place. Come ye apart. You don't talk that way, really, but I had fun with this version because basically what it's saying is, come ye apart before ye come apart. <laughs> come apart before you fall apart is basically the message here. Come and rest and just be. Come and rest 
and just be with Jesus for a little while before you are pulled into that vortex of life that leaves you tired and breathless. And what was true for those first disciples is true for us. We must come apart with God or risk falling apart without God. We must come away with God or risk pulling away from God. Now, we sometimes miss those small points, these points that I'm making. We sometimes miss them when we read Scripture because we're focusing on something else. And that's okay. That's why we read Scripture over and over, with pencil in hand, to see what jumps out at you. But sometimes we do miss some points. You see, it helps us to see something new when we read and come to the scripture over and over. This scripture may focus on Jesus and the crowds and the need for healing, but there is more going on here. We tend to focus on Jesus because we want to be like Jesus, of course. Jesus is our teacher, the model for our faith. We want to be like Jesus, the one who could perform ministry without end, who could work 24-7, the one who was able to do all things. But instead of identifying with Jesus, maybe we should look to the ones who were the followers of Jesus, the disciples. They were the ones that struggled with faith. They were the ones that had the doubts and the questions they were the ones who needed time to learn from Jesus, their teacher. They were the ones who were engaged in work and ministry along with Jesus. And they were the ones who needed time to rest. Perhaps this one time we should not ask, what would Jesus do? WWJD, if you remember the initials that were popular not too long ago. Because we know what Jesus would do. We see what Jesus does. And friends, frankly, none of us can really do all that Jesus does. So in this case, maybe instead of asking, what would Jesus do? We should ask, what can we, what can we, his disciples, do? Well, going back to those words that I circled, I think we can do many things. We can collaborate. We can communicate, as we learned from our text. And notice that those are verbs. Those are actions, right? Those indicate some action and movement. But ministry is not just something we do. And this is a stumbling block for many. Ministry is not just something we do. It's who we are at all times, at all times as followers of Jesus. Ministry is not what we do, it's who we are. While it's true that we are never apart from God, it's also true that there is always someone in need of God's presence in their lives. And that's where we come in. That's where the church comes in. The church providing care for those in need. Now notice that in the Gospels, healing did not happen within the confines of a building or a specific prearranged time, say like Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Ministry happened everywhere and at any time. Ministry happened anywhere the disciples and Jesus were, wherever they were. Ministry happened in the daily interactions with the crowds that followed them. Jesus and the disciples encountered people in need as part of their movement from place to place. Everywhere they went, there was ministry happening. There was no central location where people gathered. Yes, there was a synagogue, yes. But that's not the only place where Jesus taught and healed. In fact, it's more the case that he was healing 
and teaching by the lake shore, on a mountain, in the villages, in the community. So the lesson among many, one lesson for us is that ministry requires collaboration, <coughs> communication, and rest for renewal. So what does that look like for us, for us present day disciples? Well, let me share a story that I recently heard on Northwest Public Radio. And it's about First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Clarkston, Washington. And just last week, their pastor, David Perringer, worshiped with us with his granddaughter. He was coming back from camp, and he stopped here to be with us in worship. And I share this story because I was moved by the story as I listened to it. And this church embodies the idea of being a church in the community and for the community that shares God's healing power. So the church, First Christian Church in Clarkston, is adjacent to a park, Foster Park. It's a central gathering place for the unhoused, for the homeless. And First Christian Church extends the grace of God to those who are gathered there, regardless of their circumstances. Now recently, the city, Clarkston, decided that the homeless could not gather there anymore. And the church, which offers free meals, and this is their ministry, wonders how they can continue to minister. The church offers free daily lunch for the homeless and also serves as a cooling center on days when temperatures are like this, 100 degrees or more. And they are actively looking for more people to help, to volunteer, to stay at the church in the afternoon when the cooling center is open. One of the volunteers at First Christian Church said that she was unsure if or how the city, city's ruling might affect the church's volunteer activities. But regardless of the outcome, she was busy organizing more volunteers. She was busy preparing to open the church's doors for a meal, for a cooling space. And she wishes that more community members, even non-members of this church, would come for meals, to come and get to know this homeless population. She said, you get to know these people when you sit down and eat with them. They're just regular people. Some are down on their luck. Some choose that life, some don't. And then she adds this, it could be me tomorrow being there. As I said, this story touched me because this small church, and it is a small church, is trying to do and be God's healing power in their community. It takes volunteers, it takes people to help people, yet they found a way to feed and care for their neighbors through collaboration and communication and relying on God's healing power. And that is the gospel in action. Now the gospel in action is going to look different for different churches and in different contexts. And I would be curious to hear from our friends in Austria how that gospel in action takes place. So maybe another time. <laughs> but I would love to hear that too because I think the gospel and Jesus is not just, it's not an American gospel, friends. I hope that's not where you're at. It's the whole world. For another church, it could look different. For example, here at Northwest, we provide space for NA groups, AA groups, and other tenants. We provide healthy and delicious meals through the Food for Friends ministry. We help our neighbors and their children by donating to the schools. Ministry is doing what we can with the resources that God has given us. 
Now, sometimes we don't know how far we can go with our resources. Sometimes we need to push the limit to push what we can do and imagine all that we can be with God's help. This morning's text encourages us to look at the suffering around us, to address the needs for God's healing power anywhere we are, in any way that we can. It doesn't happen here only at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. It happens anywhere that you are as a follower of Jesus. We are the church, not just in this place, but everywhere we go. And because ministry happens all the time and everywhere when we get tired, <laughs> we need to come away. We need to come to a quiet place to listen, to learn, to, to be renewed. We need to come away and communicate with each other, lean on each other. And then once you're renewed, go. Go and share the good news once more. And this is the heart of our existence. This is who we are. This is what we do. Church is not just where we come on Sunday. It's, it's where we come to remember God, to worship God, to recharge, to sing, to pray, to cry, to laugh, to reconnect. But mostly to reconnect to that source of our strength, which is God. Now, church is important and worship is important because here, here's where we are formed, where we are shaped. And when we do something over and over, we are formed and shaped in a certain way. There's a reason why we pray the Lord's Prayer every week. It becomes a habit. Sometimes maybe you zone out, but sometimes you go to it and you have it memorized and you can pray it any time you need. There's a reason why we repeat some hymns or we repeat some prayers. Because we are being shaped and formed so that we can go out and be the church in the world. So church worship shapes us, sustains us, and gives rhythm to our days. Now, if you're retired, you might have trouble remembering what day it is. Or maybe you volunteer regularly and you know that on Thursday you're going to be at a certain place. Well, Sunday helps you keep that rhythm. Sunday helps you remember. It's the start of a week. I need to come and be recharged. So, several lessons for you here. Take what you can. If anything else, do this. Always have a pencil or a pen in hand when you approach your scripture. And when you read through, remember, different words will pop out at you at different times because in your life you might be in a different place. So let's heed the advice of our scripture today and the words that I circled. And let's continue to be church here in this place. Come ye apart and rest a while. Come ye apart before you fall apart. But before you come apart from God, come apart with God and with each other.
on to such a great love as the one God has for each of us, we can only respond by saying thank you and by offering a part of us, our time, our talents, our gifts, our money, to the continued ministry of this church. I invite you to give generously and joyfully. Please pray with me. Gracious God, you have called us to serve others in your name. Use these gifts we offer now to the benefit of all people in need of your healing touch. May your name be magnified through our actions to reflect your goodness in all we do. Amen. We remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it. And he shared with his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after he blessed it, he shared with his disciples and he said, drink of this, all of you. For this is the new covenant in my blood. Poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So we gather once more at this table to receive the bread and the cup. We invite you to come forward, forming a single line as you come forward to receive the elements. It's gluten free, crackers, and juice. Come, all things have been made ready. <laughs>
join me in the closing prayer. Holy God, by coming to your table, we receive more gifts than we deserve. We give thanks for Jesus, through whom we receive life, and in whom we are bound by the covenant of love. Renew us so we may willingly serve as Jesus served. In his name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our final hymn, a hymn of joy and sing.